his name and we're gonna praise him we're gonna honor him and give him all that belongs to him because he give us the life he give us bread that we can be in our his house this morning to give him praise and honor and glory O most righteous and eternal father god as we enter into the assembly this morning to lift you up to God and to praise your holy matchless name. Father God, you ask of you that you will direct us in every walks, Lord. Everything that we do this morning, God, we are doing it in the honor and the glory of you, Father God. And Lord God, we ask of you, O God, that you will move every obstacle, that nothing, O God, will stand to this service service from go through this morning oh god we ask you to clear from the beginning of the step right up to the door and that no weapon god will come inside to distract the service this morning father god we come because you are able and you are willing you are the only true and living god father god we ask of you lord god that you will send the angel lord god to go through every bench every seat this morning oh god we ask of you to bless the drummer bless the musician god bless the worshiper oh god we ask your blessing of on everything this morning yes, oh god those who are on the way lord god you give them a safe journey to come lord god yes they will step oh god we ask of you oh god that you will guide them from accident incident and danger for you lord god are holy you are worthy god lord remember their family those who the family is not coming but remember those god for you only god father god we ask of you that you will lead us and direct us, oh God. Lord God, you give us the scripture. Remember the ends of this Christ Fellowship Ministry, oh God. Father God, we ask of you to bless the prophet as he's not here. But God, he gone on a mission for you, God. Lord, and I ask of you, Lord God, that we know, God, you know, God, that he will accomplish the mission that he gone for, for it is for you, God. And as, as you leave the scene of pastor behind, oh God, you leave us behind, God, to take care of the assembly, Lord God. With you in it, Jesus Christ, with you all things are possible. Lord God, we know we are few. We may be few, God, but we can tear down Satan's kingdom. We can dismantle every plan and every plot of the enemy and the deceitful this morning. Oh God, you say no weapon, no weapon that form against Christ fellowship ministry shall prosper. And God, we give it to you, Lord God. We turn this assembly over to you this morning. Oh God, you will choose the word. You will choose the scriptures, God. Because we don't come here to sit down. We come here to lift up our hands and to open our mouth and to praise you, God, and to give you the honor and the glory. For you give us life this morning. You make we see another day that we can worship you, O oh God. And we thank you, Father God, for every moment. We thank you for it, God. No wizard, no, no warlock, no turn back blow, no blush like God. We'll come over this assembly this morning. But God, we will give you, Lord. We will glorify you. Worship you, Lord. remember the scene of pastor this morning oh god that when she come to give us the word the word which is the food lord god which is the substance of our life as you give it to her god she will give it out unto us god that we can remember that there's a god there's a god that lasts and he lives forevermore you never fail god you are a never failing god and i thank you father god for this moment oh thank you for your privilege we can't go to 
single weapon that has been formed against this ministry shall stand, Almighty God. Father, you said in your word, the gates of hell shall never prevail against your church. So by your word, Almighty God, we decree and we declare that every conspirators, that every instigators that are attacking us, Almighty God, we send back every single arrow. We send back every dart, Almighty God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we decree and we declare that the plans of our enemy shall come to naught. It shall never prevail. It shall never prevail in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For you have set your angels in charge over us, Almighty God. We thank you for your angels, Almighty God. We thank you. We thank you for your protection, Almighty God. We call you Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider, O God. You provide for us every single day. We take it not for granted, Almighty God. You woke up us this morning. You woke us up this morning. You have given us life. You have given us health. You have given us strength. You have given us a roof over our heads. You have provided us with food. You have provided us with so many things, Almighty God. Let us not take it for granted. And we say, thank you, our Father. We say, thank you, Jehovah Jireh. Thank you for being our provider. Jehovah, worry our light. Continue to shine your light over us as we walk out of darkness and into your marvelous light. Thank you, Jehovah Jehovah. Thank you, Jehovah Ori, for being our light, Almighty God. For you are the lamp to our feet and the light to our path. Thank you, Jehovah Ori. Thank you, O oh Father. Father, we take every single gift that you have given to us, every perfect gift, Almighty God, and we say thank you for the breath of life that you have given to us, for you have breathed your life into us, Almighty God. You woke us up this morning, Almighty God. We can see, we can feel, we can taste, we can hear, we can smell, oh God. Because of you, oh God, no one can give us life like you do, oh God. No one can die for us the way you do, oh God. So we say thank you, Allah. Father. Thank you, our Father. We praise your name, oh God. We praise your name. We praise your name. Father, we thank you. I take you, Jesus. I take you, Jesus. I take you for our leaders. I take you for the man and woman of God. I thank you, Father, for our leaders. Father, as you said, the man and the woman of God, Prophet David Osborne and Rita for the Father, I thank you for our spiritual mother and our spiritual father, oh God. Father, I call, I call the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of who you are. I call on your strength. I call on the capacity. I call on your power. I call on your strength, oh God. To strengthen them, oh God. As they lead this ministry, Almighty oh God. For we know it is not easy, oh God. You say many are called, but few are chosen. You chose them to lead this ministry, oh God. You set them under their mantle, oh God, of Isaiah 61. And we decree, and we declare that no weapon form against us. No weapon form against your people. No weapon form against the prophet and his wife. They shall come to naught. And they shall become nothing, oh God. Because they are here for you, oh God. You have called them on a mission, oh God. And I call on you, Father, to continue to protect them. Continue to strengthen them. Continue to be with them. Continue to guide them, oh God. Continue to watch over them. Continue to protect them, oh God. Hide them under your wings, oh God.
as we operate on the revival of Isaiah 61, oh God, to proclaim liberty unto the captives, to teach your word, oh God, and to remove the bonds of prison, oh God, against those who are in prison, oh God, physical and spiritual, oh God. Father, I call on you to strengthen us, oh God, in this journey, oh God, we hold on you, oh God. We hold on to you, oh God. And help us ever to remember, oh God, to trust you. To trust you with all our hearts. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, oh God. But in all our ways acknowledge that you, oh God, and you will. You will be lead us, oh God. Continue to lead us, oh God, as we look to you. The all time to finish our whole fate, oh God. For we can do nothing without you, oh God. We can do nothing without you, oh God. But we you, God, we can do all things, oh God, because you strengthen us, oh God. We look to you, oh God, as the author and the finish of all faith, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all the gifts that you have given to us. The peace, the past, and all of Thank you for your love, oh God. For you said your love, nothing can separate us from your love. Neither death, neither nakedness, nor perils, nor tribulation. Nothing can separate us from your love. We thank you for your love, oh God. We thank you for your mercy, oh God. We thank you, Father, for the living Son of God. Because he lives, oh God, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives. I take you, Father. I am not my own. We are not our own, Lord God. We are not our own because you bought us with a price. We are not our own, Lord God. So we look to you to guide us in all things. And as we welcome you in us, this almighty God, and as a woman of God, bring your message, let it be timely. Let your word be timely. And we call on your Holy Ghost, Almighty God, to guide her as she brings your word. Not by her might, not by her power, but by your spirit, oh God. Let her be led by you, oh God. That your word brings transformation. That it pierces our soul. That it pierces our spirit. It divides, oh mighty God, our soul and our spirit. Let the word, oh mighty God, touch us. Let there be signs and wonders and miracles, oh mighty God, today in your worship. Let there be changes in lives, oh mighty God. For those who are on their way, oh mighty God. We call on traveling mercies, oh mighty God. We call on traveling mercies, oh mighty God. We take on divine insurance against incidents and accidents for everyone that is on their way. And we call on their speed to be here, oh mighty God, in your presence. Father, I deliver the worship team before you, the drummer, the keyboard. Father, continue to anoint their hands, to anoint their lives, Almighty God, as we dedicate this worship to you, not for us, Almighty God, but for you and you alone. I bring the worship leader before you, Almighty God. Anoint her voice, Almighty God, as she sings for you. As she opens her vocals, as she opens to you, Almighty God. Let all worship be acceptable unto you, O God, as we deliver this worship to you. In your name. The name that is of all names. I thank you, Father. And I glorify you. And I praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God, thank you, Jesus. Father, you are great. Yes, you are. You are great. You are great. You are great. You are mighty. 
and your name is worthy of all praises, God. So we just want to give you praise. We just want to worship you this morning, God. We just want to give you our all in the mighty name of Jesus.
all the praise that is due to your matchless name. You alone deserve our worship. You alone deserve our praise. Come and lift up your hand and lift up your voice and call upon the name of the Lord. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We honor you. We honor you. You are great.
God praise and give God glory. It's all about you, Jesus. Yes, if there's nothing else to thank God for, thank God for the flood, for the for the storm, the past. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Yes. Not because we deserve it, but because of your mercy. Yes. We say thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. God, I want to give you praise, which is of my Father, and the reason why I do what I do. Holy Spirit, I thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to stand before your people. I just want to give honor to you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. And I want to give honor to my husband, Apostle David Osborne, in his absence. And I give God praise for him. And I want to thank God for him trusting me with God's people. Amen. It is a privilege. It is not an entitlement. It is a privilege. And I thank God that wherever he is, that the hand of the Lord will continue to strengthen him. That his eyes will be open. That a deeper depth and a higher height he will attain in the name of Jesus. That everything that will make for the expression of Jesus to be manifested in his life will be made available 
in the name of Jesus. That he will come to the utmost and the zenith and the pinnacle of what God has acquired for him to do. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Lord God, I present your people before you. And I present them to your word, which is able to build them up and give an inheritance among the saints. Lord, that I will decrease and you will increase. Speak your word to the people in the language that they will understand. That they will see you. And at the end, we will be careful to give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, talk with me to Lord. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was at his, as it were of a trumpet talking to me, which says, Come up hither, and I will show you the show you the things which must be thereafter. No stick in this one. After this I looked and behold, a door was opened. And the voice said unto me, Come up, hither. This morning I'm going to be titling my message, Come Up. Now as believers, there come a time where we get tired of where we are. Where we get tired of the level and the place we are. Where complacency is no longer the thing, the comfortability is no longer the in thing. Now certain things about the things of God cannot be taught. They cannot be read. They cannot be impacted. They can only be shown. Now I want to take back. See, if you look at the, if you look at John the, if you look at John the Apostle, the person that wrote the book of Revelation is John. And one thing the Bible makes us understand that John was the beloved of God. Out of the twelve disciples, Jesus had three were special to him. Three were his intimate, but one was very dear to him. That was why the Bible called him the beloved. And because John was the beloved, John was the one that received this revelation. Now, even though John. Now, this is what I wanted you to understand. That even when Jesus was in the world, before he ascended into heaven, the Bible says he breathed upon his disciples and told them, receive the Holy Ghost. That was the first impartation of the Holy Ghost. And before he was ascended to heaven, the Bible says that Jesus told them, tarry in Jerusalem, when the promise of the Father will be given. And because the promise of the Father, when you tarry for me there, that promise will be poured upon you. And the Bible says when they stay in the upper room, when they tarry before the Lord, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came like a mighty wind on the day on the feast of Pentecost that the Holy Spirit came upon them and when he came upon them the Spirit of God lighted upon their head and the Bible says that they were given utterance and they begin to speak in diverse tongues as were given by the Holy Ghost now you have to understand that even though Jesus breathed in them before he left he still tell them to go and tarry because when you tarry you receive the empowerment the fulfillment of the Holy Ghost upon your life. I come to submit to you that even though John the Beloved was with the, was with Jesus, he had to go on a higher realm and a higher plane to receive that which God has assigned to him. Listen, the Bible says when Mary gave birth to Jesus by the Holy Ghost, he received a revelation of the Lord that you were going to give birth to Jesus. But when Jesus died and told them, even though I am dead, there is a promise that you ought to receive. Number one, the Holy Ghost endured Mary and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Even though she was conceived, she too had to go to her for the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen. She too had to wait on the upper room. For the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says with the one twenty that were there, Mary too was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. But how come she had because the Holy Ghost overwhelmed her and she conceived by the Holy Ghost? Why is it that she had to go tarry again? Now sometimes in the place where God has called us, we become too comfortable. We come to the point where we say, you know, I know all that there is to be known of God. I am conversant because so and so time God used to use me. I need to submit to you. Even though God used to use you, this is now. Yeah. What is God doing in you? What is God doing through you that is affecting your generation, affecting your nation, even right now? 
The Bible says I heard a voice and says, come up. Now the Bible says in First John, John the beloved wrote First John. He said up from the beginning, the things that we have seen. John chapter, first John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning of the things that we have seen and we have heard and our hands have handled of the Jesus. Of the, of the life of God. He walked with Jesus. He did everything Jesus asked him to do. Now question, when you walk with the Lord so much, do not get too familiar with God's presence. Because when you think God is here, God can cheat. That was why when God was moving with the children of Israel, they always would pitch their tent. Now anywhere the cloud went, they followed. Because God is not stationary. Even though God has used you in 1920, what is God going to use you to do in 2021? We become too comfortable. We become to the level that, okay, I am born again, so it's okay for me. Okay, I am going to church, uh, that is enough for me. Okay, I can speak in tongues, uh, that is enough for me. I can pray for one hour, that is enough. But there is a deeper depth in God. There is a height in God that God has called each and every one of us to come. But until we come to the place where we can go up, we cannot see that dimension of God. No matter how I teach you, no matter how much I pray for you, but the things of the Spirit can only be shown by revelation. But in order for you to come to the place of revelation, you have to go what? Up. Because God does not come down to you. You have to go what? Up. Paul said, whether in the Spirit, in the body or outside the body, but I do not know, but there was such a man that was caught up. In the heaven, when God wants to speak with you, He takes on you. He takes you to a place of a new realm. He takes you above. Get tired of being comfortable in the level you are. Get tired of being complacent. There is too much of God to be seen. There is too much revelation to be known. There is more of God to be had, even in this level. Why we look not at the things that are seen? But the things that are seen, they are temporary. But the things that are not seen, those are the real things. Those are the internal things. The things that make us who we are. That express, that express, that helps us express ourselves into that very image of God. Is where God is calling us. The Bible says, though he was king, though he was royalty, he came out of eternity. He came out of the heavenly and put on flesh and became limited because of his purpose. So it therefore means that even though Jesus had a purpose, you too have a purpose. Amen. Until you come to the level when you can go up, you cannot attain. Because revelation comes. Jesus, growth comes by revelation. Revelation comes by things that are shown. That is why when you encounter God, your life doesn't remain the same. Even though we become born again, but yet we are not converted. Nothing changes on, changes about our life. You have to understand that Christianity is a lifestyle and it takes you actively involved. It takes your consciousness. It takes your will, your emotion and your mind to live this Christian life. I hear people tell me Christianity is hard. Hey, let me announce to you. It is not hard. It is your mind that is limiting you. Amen. It is not. Amen. We can do all things through. And you have that Christ inside of you. So how come you cannot live your Christian life comfortably? The Bible says greater. Greater. Greater is he that is in me. If the greater one is in you, how come you're allowing the world to conquer you? It takes revelation to be caught up in heaven. Turn with me. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3, it says, call on me and I will answer you. When you call me, I will answer. I will not only answer, I will show you things that you do not know. Draw me. Draw me, Lord. Jesus, and now I come running, not to you, 
Hey, go go tally be Draw me. Yes, Lord. Draw me, Lord. And I'll come running after you. Take me to the place, Lord. To the secret place where I can be with you. You can make me like you. Wrap me in your hands. See, there is a place in God. He said, call on me. Sometimes we struggle. There's somewhere that says, we go through struggle because we do not call on Jesus. Amen. Jesus. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We struggle so much. We complain so much. We ask God, God, why is this happening to me? And we forget that there comes a place in our life where we have to look at our problem and say, you know what? Even though I am going through you, even though it looks the way I am looking, but I choose to keep my eyes on Jesus because I know my God is greater than what I am going through. My God is able to keep me from falling. My God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I have to think. So it doesn't matter. I've got God. I've got God. He says, call on me. Call on me and I will show you. There is so much of God to be had. But you have to come up higher. That is a calling this morning. Come up higher. Come up from the mediocre. Come on from the melancholy. Come on from the, the little, the small. Come out. Come on higher so that God can show you the reason why you were created. Let me use Moses as a case study. The Bible says when Moses was born, in his town that he was born, all his peers all his age mates were all killed. When they were killed, the only person in that generation, in that peer, was Moses. And the Bible says from Moses, when Moses was born, the hand of the Lord was upon him. Now because the hand of the Lord was upon him, he sought the Lord. This is where I'm going. Even though Moses was in Pharaoh's house, the Bible says he, he wasn't distracted by the glory and the pleasure of Pharaoh's house. So even though he was Hebrew, the lineage of the Hebrews, the lineage of the Israelites was still upon him. And even though he stayed in Pharaoh, he still went to look about his people. And the Bible says why his people were under heavy labor, he will go and look at them and see their struggle. And every time he saw their struggle, he saw the burden of his people and something had to be torn. And because the hand of the Lord was upon him, he could not stay put. He could not. He will shall he will sir. For us to walk with God. We have to encounter Jesus. We have to encounter him. Now, when Moses ran away from Egypt, the Bible says, Pharaoh had the thing that he did, that he killed an Egyptian in the bed to save his own people. And he ran away because he knew if Pharaoh caught him, he's dead. And the Bible says for 40 years, he ran 40 years, Moses ran until God encountered him. God encountered him. And the Bible says why he was behind the mountain, turned in onto his father-in-law's sheep and animals. He saw a burning bush. He saw a burning bush. And he turned to himself and said, you know what? Let me see this sight. Something has to be attracted to you. Let me see what's going on here because the fire is on the tree but yet the leaves are not consumed. And the Bible says when he turned aside to go see the voice spoke. Moses, take up your shoes. Take up your shoes for where you stand is the holy ground. 
Hallelujah. Walk with me, turn with me to um, Exodus. <sighs> Exodus chapter 2. Hallelujah. Start from verse 13. When Moses encountered Jesus, <clears throat> when he encountered the Father in that burning bush, the Bible says that there was a restoration of his vision and his passion. Now let me take you back to Egypt. Before Moses fled Egypt and went to, went to meet his, and stayed by his father-in-law in the wilderness, he was in the wilderness, the Bible says that he had a passion. He had a body and he had a vision for his people, the children of Israel. That everywhere he went, when he saw, what do you call it, injustice, he always reacted to it. When he saw an Egyptian fighting against his own brother, the Bible says something rose up in him. And what? He killed the Egyptian and buried him. Then another day he was going, thinking everything was good. The Bible says that when he went to go, this time around, he went to go separate two people that were supposed to be brothers. And one said to him, hey, are you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian? And the Bible says he ran. He said, oh, I thought this was a secret. But it's no. The Bible says he ran. Now, because of him running, he lost the passion. He lost his vision. He didn't care so much about, look at these people I'm even trying to free. Look at the people I'm even killing myself for. They are doing this to me. And the Bible says for 40 years, he never thought about Egypt. He never thought. He was comfortable, complacent, and okay where he was. Tending to his father in lordship And he assignment in God. As God called Moses, God is calling you. Because when you come up higher, there is a place of an encounter with God. That when you encounter God, number one, your vision, your passion will be restored. And I have to submit to you that there are things that kills vision. There are things that kills our passion, that causes our body to be lifted up. That we no longer care. What with me, people? And the Bible says one of the reasons for the failure why our vision fails is the wrong approach. I said Moses is our, our, our point of reference, the wrong approach. Even though God called him to be a deliverer, he's going about taking out the Egyptian one after the other was the wrong method. There is a way to do things when it comes to the things of God. There is an order to do things. Let me submit to you. Everybody know the story of Elijah and Elisha. The Bible says when God told Elisha, Elijah, go and anoint Elisha in thy stead. The Bible says when Elijah saw Elisha, he threw a mantle upon him and he walked past. That was the first time Elisha was anointed. And the second time Elisha had a mantle was when the man of God was to go to heaven with chariots of fire. And the Bible says Elijah said unto Elisha, what is it you want me to give you? The distance between the first time the mantle was thrown upon him and the second time he got the mantle was 21 years. So Elijah said Elijah for 21 years before he received the other mantle. And Elijah said to Elijah, I pray that the double portion of your spirit comes upon me. You understand? How come Elijah is asking for a double portion? Let me tell you, the demons that Elijah was fighting in his days, Elijah would need more to conquer that. Because in Elijah's time, there was no Jezebel. There was no Jezebel. In Elijah's time, there was no 500 prophet of hell. So he needed a double to accomplish the feat. And when Elijah left, he said, listen, this thing you are asking me is hard. But nevertheless, if your focus is on me, if your eyes is on me, if you are not distracted by your environment, by your circumstances, or what is going on around you, you shall receive according to the desire of your heart. And Elijah positioned himself. And when the chariot came, and the chariot sent the two of them to ascend, them, divided the two of them.
him. The Bible says, Elisha screamed out, My father, my father. And the Bible says, The mantle dropped. He dropped. He dropped. Between the mantle one and mantle two, it took 21 years for Elisha to receive that mantle. Let me go back. And the Bible says, even though God called Moses to be a deliverer, the Bible says his methodology was wrong. His approach was wrong. God told him you are going to deliver these people. But he went one after the other to go kill an Egyptian. And when he killed an Egyptian, Moses Pharaoh wanted his head. Wrong approach. That is why we lose vision. We lose our passion because of the wrong approach. Number two, wrong timing. Wrong timing. Even though God called him, there is a set time. There is a set time. When God calls you, God gives you a platform. Now upon that platform, you have to stay until God promotes you. Jesus. Let me explain something to you. You have to understand the difference between the anointing and a man. Or rather, the anointing and an office. The, anoint, the anointing is a grace on the man. But the office for the anointing to flow has got nothing to do with the man. Let me explain. When I say the office, let me explain that. When you get a job as a manager of a company, it doesn't matter who you are. The benefit of becoming the manager comes to you. So you are entitled to a car. You are entitled to, uh, to, to the company house. You are entitled to every fringe benefit that comes with the position of a manager. Am I correct? Because that itself is an office. So when God anoints a man and he must steps into an office, he has got nothing, absolutely nothing to do with that man. He has got everything to do with the office and the benefit of the office. So even though God called Moses to become a deliverer, but there was a timing for this calling to become manifest. He had to wait on this timing. And he ran ahead to Pastor God. He ran ahead. That was why he had to run away. Because the timing was wrong. Even though he was going to deliver the children of Israel, you had to wait on God. Sometimes we grumble, God, how long? How long? I have been waiting. How long? I have been crying. How long? Let me submit to you. When God promised Abraham, I'm going to give you a seed and you're going to be a father of many nations. He took Abraham 25 years for that promise to come to pass. Listen, it doesn't matter what your chronological age is. According to your biological status, it doesn't matter. The Bible says that one day with God is like a thousand years with man. And a thousand years with man is like one day unto God. You're not even living a quarter of one day of God. So what are you worrying about? Amen. Amen. Wait on God. How long? And the Bible says, Abraham wanted to help God. Abraham wanted to help God. And his result of helping God is the crisis we are still facing today. Wrong timing. Wrong timing. Now, one, this is one of the one of the things that causes our passion, our vision. God called you, yes, but you have to wait. Even though He called you, you have to be appointed. Let me give an example. If you were to be recruited into the army, you have to go through training. Am I correct? When you go through training, they will send you home until they have a posting for you. Am I correct? So you wait until you are what? Called. You wait on your time. So not everybody that went through the training, not everybody that went through the process are called immediately. So it takes time. Because of their allocation. Their allocation and the assignment, it takes time. So what happened to Moses is that he forgot or he forgot to wait on his timing. So he ran ahead of God and he caused a lot of chaos. And the reason of his 
Philistines made it end up away in the wilderness. Number three, enemy confrontation. This is one of the reasons why our vision and our passion fail because the enemy confronts us. If you look at Exodus, you go back to Exodus. Look at it, Exodus chapter 2. He says, And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong. When prosperity thou thy fellow? 14. And he said, Who made thee a priest and a judge over us? Who made you a priest and a judge over us? So sometimes, even though God called you, you have not been made. You have not been made. God called Moses, yes. He ordained him a deliverer of Israel, yes. But he has not been made. Because this is why the enemy confronts him. Oh yes, we know there's a calling upon your life, but have you been made? Have you gone through the process of molding? Have you gone through the process of the furnace, the fire? Have you gone through? So if you have gone through, then I will know that you are made. And I have to know what you are made of. What substance are you made of? And the Bible says an enemy confronted him. The person he taught was supposed to be by his side. Told him, who made you? A priest. And a priest and a judge over us. Indeed, as thou, thou to kill me, as thou killed the Egyptian. And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Now, even though God called us, we have to wait on the day of our showing forth. This is where we go higher. Because when you encounter God, He shows you your allocation. He shows you your assignments. And an enemy confronted him and told you, who made you? Who made you? When did you become? When did you become a judge? When did you become an advisor? When did you become the one that will tell us this? Tell us that. Tell us that. Number four, absence of preparation. When you are being made, you are being prepared. A gold. If you see gold in its raw states, you will not appreciate it. But gold had to go through what? The process of what? Making. So they are not only making gold, they are preparing the gold. So that when you see it, it becomes what? Appealing to your nature. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love gold. Oh, I love jewelry. And I love bling bling. Mm -hmm. So it has to go through the process of making and preparation. So one of the reasons Moses went ahead of him, well, he, 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 he delayed, he was not made. He was not prepared rather. There was absence of preparation. You have to go through the process. God has to prepare you. Now, if we go back to the kingdom, the, the, the story of first king, when Elijah ran away from, El, uh, from Jezebel, I think it's first kings, I think. When he ran away from Jezebel, the Bible says he went, he ran, ran, ran. And the Bible says he cried out to God, God kill me. God kill me. Can't you realize that I'm the only one person here? They killed all the fathers before me. And God look at you. God didn't say the word. And the Bible says God sent a raven to feed him. Go to the brook. Eat bread and drink water. Day and night. Twice. When the bread fed him the second time, the Bible says God said, eat, drink. And the Bible says he went in the strength of the meal for 40 days. So even though God told him, even though he cried to God that Jezebel, imagine a man, you destroyed 500 hefty looking men. 500. But one legged legged woman. Say, if I catch you, I will take off your head. So, where all the anointing and all the grace and all the power, where did he go? And Elijah was scared and he ran. I said, God, I did. <laughs> Jezebel wants my head now. And God told him. And he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Went in the strength of the meal. And God wasn't in the wind. He was looking for God in the wind and the fire. God wasn't there. But a still small voice spoke to him and God told him, Listen, you are not the only one. 
Don't think you are the only one. I have 700 prophets that have not even bowed to me. And God said, so because you tell me, take your life, you see the anointing you have, point on three people. Asa, Jehu, and Elisha. He said, divide the anointing. And the Bible says, the one that you pour on Jehu will be the one that will destroy Jezebel. And the Bible says, even though Jehu was supposed to be the next king after Ahab, he was delayed. Oh, that's a catastrophe. And the Bible says, even though Elijah cried before God, he needed preparation. So that preparation led him 40 days. 40 days. 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and waited on the Lord and got to go and anoint Elisha. And he threw a mantle on Elisha and he had to prepare Elisha too. So the absence of preparation leads to our vision and our passion being aborted. Amen. Work with me. I'm almost done. Now, another thing you have to understand that you cannot take people to replace when you are not me. You don't give what you don't have. For you to be able to give something, you have to have something. The Bible says in John, when in Acts, in the book of Acts, when Paul and, and Peter and John, when they went to the temple to pray, the Bible says that they saw a man at the gate beautiful. And the man stood there every day for years, begging the people going into the temple. And the Bible says when it was Paul and Peter and John's turn, they saw him listen. The man looked up them and stretched hand, give me something. And they said to him, hey, listen, money I don't have. Gold I don't have. Silver I don't have. What I have is what I'm giving to you. And the Bible said they said to him, look on us. And he looked on them in anticipation of receiving something that he is accustomed to receiving. And they said to him, in the name of Jesus, rise up and work. Because one touch from God can change your situation. Amen. Because God will not only give you fish, he will teach you how to get fish. As long as he was at the gate of beautiful, he was always receiving fish. Yes. And Peter and John told me, hey, enough of that. God is going to restore you wholly. Because they had something, they were able to release something. Revelation gives you something substantial. The Bible says, set your affections on things that are above, not on things here. When Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of the Father, so upon where he sits, the Bible says he maketh intercession. And he went further to say that everything that pertains to life and godliness is given unto you. For out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Question, what are you doing with the water you have in there? What are you doing? Everybody remind, remember the layman at the pool of Siloam. The Bible says every time the spirit came and stirred the water, he sat on his mat, lame. And every time he was to go, somebody went in there because the spirit comes to stir the water once in a while. And Jesus said to him, would you be made whole? What was his response? If somebody asks you, you want to get better? Your response is yes or no, am I correct? Yes. Would you be made whole? I have no man. What does man got to do with what you want. So it therefore means you don't need man for God to bless you. Amen. Let me rephrase. Amen. God blesses you through man to man. Let me rephrase. No man gives you anything except God inspires him to do it. Amen. Everybody understand that now? Yes. So even though when Jesus asked him, would you be made who he said I need, so he depended on man to get what he want. Forgetting that Jesus is the giver of life. Yes. And he said to him, man, look here. Your priority needs to be straightened. Your objective needs to be understood. And he said to him, take up your mats and go. You don't need any man. 
What you need is an encounter with Jesus. That is why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, it says, seek ye first. The what? And his, and all these hosts. So what are we doing now? We are chasing after all these things and allowing God to chase after us. Oh, rather, we are seeking all these things and allowing God to chase after us. We are doing the reverse. I think the Bible says somewhere in Psalms and Puma, it said the heart of a king is in the hands of God. Like water, he's telling it to whatsoever direction he wills. This is God, you know. See, everything you need is in a man. Let me repeat myself. Everything you need in this life is in a man. All you need to pray is ask God to stir up the heart of that man to locate you. To stand up the heart of the man to look at you. So sometimes there has to be something here. That is why when we go to God, God says, bring your strong petition. Bring your strong reasons. There has to be something you need that you pursue God so much that you don't leave him until you get it. How do I know? Ask Jacob. The Bible says Jacob wrestled with the angel until the breaking of day and he told the angel, hey, I will not let you go until you bless me. There is something I want that I don't have. Until you give it to me, I will not leave you. And the Bible says the angel told him, what is your name? <laughs> name matters. And he said, my name is Israel, um, Jacob. Uh -uh. He said, no, you're not Jacob. From today, you cease to be a supplanter. You cease to be a deceptive person. You cease to be a deceiver. And I will call you Israel. So when you encounter God, not only does your life change, your name changes, and something is deposited on your inside. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So you always have to what? Give what you have. I cannot take you to the place where I have not been. If I say, come girlfriend, let's go to let's go to the spa. Me taking you to the spa should know the direction to the spa. Am I correct? Yeah. So I can't say I'm good, I'm taking you to the spa. And we stand, okay, which road is to the spa now? Which way should we drive? All Saints Road? Mm -hmm. St. Walter's Highway? Which way should we drive? Where is Townhouse anyway? You have to know it to take somebody there. This Jesus that we so preach about, this born again that you are so into, how come nobody knows the direction to Jesus? Better still, how come nobody has encountered Jesus through you? Question, have you encountered him? Are you on a higher frequency that people look at you and say, hey girl, I want to come under your umbrella. You see that thing that you have, I want it. Can people look at you and say, hey girl, you have something that I know I am missing out. I want it. Because there has to be something inside of you for somebody to want. That is why we have role models. We have mentors, am I correct? Most of our young girls today, their role models is Rihanna and Beyonce. They look up to them because they have something that they want. They aspire to be that. Can somebody look at you and say, listen, you see that woman there? I want to be like her. It is what you have. The Bible says that there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty giving you what? Understanding. That the spirit of man is a candlelight of the Lord. When people look at you, do they see Jesus? When people look at you, do they see the manifestation and the expression of the same one you claim to be serving? Or is Jesus just your Savior and not your Lord? There has to be something you have inside of them that draws people to you. That is no longer about preaching to them. It's no longer about telling them about Jesus. Your life becomes a living epistle. When people read you and say, yes, something is different about this lady. Something is different about this lady. Hallelujah. Number two. The restoration of your hearing and direction. When you come up higher, God restores your ability to hear and give you direction. 
Now some of us right here are confused as to what decision to make. What should we do? I'm planning to do this, God. I'm planning to make this decision or to hold this direction. But I need direction. I need you to tell me which way to walk. But when you go up higher in the frequency for where God can communicate with you, he restores your hearing. He restores your hearing. Now one of the reasons we lack direction or we lack, we lack the ability to hear from God is that we are too much distracted. Our mind is too loud. We are never in the state of quietness. When a fool is silenced, he's confused like a, as a wise man. Am I correct? When a fool stops talking, but you look at him like, ah, he looks very put together and sophisticated. Even though we are quiet, our minds, our minds is still so loud. It's still so loud that even when God communicates with us, the crowdiness and the rowdiness of our mind causes us not, us not to even hear from God. Yet we need direction. We need to hear, God, what are you saying? Where are you leading me to? How do I go about it? What scripture do I read? How do I pray? How do I fast? How do I spend time with you? Now the reason we don't hear God or we don't get direction is because of distraction. Too many distractions everywhere. Sometimes it is not a distraction outside. It's a distraction in here. And one of our greatest challenge, our greatest battlefield is our mind. Now do you know that some of the thoughts that you think are not yours? Some of the thoughts, some of the things that go through your minds, they are not your own. They are not yours. There is a spirit behind your thought life. That is why when Satan wants to tempt you, he doesn't come in the human flesh. He suggests to you with the power of the mind. So you think, oh, it's me that thinks it. It is me thinking it. It's not you. It is not you. Because the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on those things. Pure, good, good report. How come you are thinking negativity, bad news, evil things? Are they from God? Are you the one thinking them? Now, because of the thought pattern, we get distracted. Okay, I want to do this. Probably the Lord is leading something in your life. Here you go now. What if I open and I don't have customer? What if I don't have money to pay rent? What if I didn't get the job? What if the man didn't like me? What if I'm walking on the street that a car hits me? What if my boyfriend broke up with me? What if, what if, and all you think about is the negativity. Question, are you the one thinking it? Now when God puts something in your heart, you have to follow through. Because when God gives you direction, if you don't follow the previous direction he gives you, he stops speaking. Because when he tells you something to do and you don't do it, why will he tell you to do something else? For him to continually speak, it is it's on the platform of your obedience to the previous, previous word or previous communication God has given to you. So God tells you to do this and in your human nature, you procrastinate until 10 years later. And yet you raise up your hand, speak to me Lord, speak to me Lord. And God looks at you, what are the things I told you 10 years ago? <laughs> I will cry all the time. Speak to me. Because amongst our environment, too many distractions. The Bible says, sin shall not have dominion over you. So how come we're allowing sin to have dominion over our mind? He said you have the mind of Christ. If you have the mind of Christ, you have the mind of what? Of a victor. You have the mind of what? Of an overcomer. 
You have the mind of you can do all things to Christ that strengthens you. How come you have the mind of Christ, but yet the things that you still think are things that defeat you physically? Now, one of the things that causes us to lose direction and to hear from God is distraction. Number two, what will be? I'm gonna close shortly. Number two, disobedience of what previous instruction. God told you to do something. You know, I tell people, listen. If you have money, right, and the money is not enough to do what you are doing, so it. I'll tell you why. You want to pay your rent, right? <laughs> or you want to buy gas, or you want to buy something, and the money cannot do the work. Give it to God. You know why? Because when you give to Him, number one, you tell Him, you are my source. Number two, I do not depend on what I can see right now because I know you are able to supply. You know the funny thing is about God, when we come to our wit's end, is when God shows up. Now we put an ultimatum. God, if, you don't, if I don't get married this year, I will backslide. Backslide, no? Backslide. Because you have to understand that even though God exists in eternity, God does not exist in time. So your timing and his timing are two different timings. That is why the Bible says that he makes everything beautiful. It is what? In his time. So when you give him an ultimatum, the devil come and tell you, listen, it is one month, you know, one month before the year end and nothing is happening. And you, in yourself, you become impatient with God. God taking too long, man. God taking too long, man. God taking too long. And you go and do what you're not supposed to do. Ask, ask Abraham. He went to Egypt. Innocently. But he left to Egypt. Let me explain. Now, even though he went to Egypt with Sarah, the Bible says God spoke to Abraham. God communed with Abraham. But when Abraham was leaving Egypt, he already had Egypt inside of him. So sometimes the environment will enter in, leave something with us. It is not going to be pronounced the same day. You're not going to notice it the same day, but give it time. It will show up. So when Sarah told Abraham, see my maid here, go into her, there was no resistance. Because it was already in him. That is why Abraham is not the father of Ishmael. Hmm? Abraham is not the father of Ishmael. Abraham is the father of Ishmael. When Abraham left Egypt, Egypt became inside of him. Sometimes when we attach ourselves to people, there is a transference of spirits. A transference of character, behavior. That is why the Bible says, do not walk with an angry man. If not, you become angry like him. Evil communication corrupts good manners. You become distracted. Now, if the person leaves you, I noticed this about me. When I was growing up, I saw my mother wear her face a certain way. When I sit down by myself, I just catch myself wearing my face like my mother. <laughs> I think uh, you look like your mom now. <laughs> no, seriously. I stayed with her so much that I picked up something from her. So when she's in a quiet state, that's how she wears her face. So when I'm quiet, that's how I wear my face. And I shall see how you look like your mom. Because I picked up something from her unconsciously. Same thing with friendship, same things with, with, with relationship. They become a distraction that we lose our identity in trying to secure friendship. Oh. Have you ever noticed when people are in a relationship and the guy acting a certain way, we tend to want to live our life to please the person that we are with. Or we do everything to please them and we lose our identity by doing that. So when they finally leave us, where do I start preach from? It, Pastor, preach it. I don't know who I am anymore. Preach it. I have lost my self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Your word goes down because the person left you. You were always living your life to please that person. 
Not the person God, who you please in now. You can't even find yourself, find yourself as if find yourself born again because that person is gone. Now when you see that and you start to think, I wish if it was here and I would have been doing this, doing that, or doing that. And you turn to blame yourself for the person leaving you. You see how stupid you are? The person loved you, left you. And you're not blaming yourself for the I wish I know I wouldn't have done that to I him. Probably he would not have left. Those are distractions. Anybody that left you wanted to live long time does absolutely got nothing to do with you. Richard, amen. 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 Nothing to do with you. Amen. I was listening to somebody, somebody on Facebook said, was listening to another guy say he's been married for five years. He had a terrific relationship. His wife was superb. But now he wants to divorce his wife. So I asked myself, you said you have a terrific relationship for five years. Your wife is lovely. Where are you? What do you want to be? Uh, uh, and his stupid reason was that he is bored. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, what is the word turning on? So you would divorce somebody you claim you love and you have to, because you are bored? <laughs> Number three, discouragement or depression. The reason that we lose, that we fail, to hear from God and to get direction is what? Discouragement and depression. Now it is so it is so it is so easy to be discouraged when we don't get what we want. The Bible says, hope deferred, make it the, the hearts what seek. Hope deferred. When you desire something so much and it doesn't come, there's a tendency of you being the word discouraged and you being depressed. But there's always a defense mechanism for that. Instead of you being depressed, you see that energy of being depressed and discouraged, do something else. When one door closes, inevitably, another door will open. So your life is not dependent on that one particular thing. When you go apply for a job and they tell you, sorry, we cannot employ you, be excited. Go look for a job again. Go somewhere else. Probably that's not where God wants you to work. Now we'll be so discouraged. Why is it only me? Why, is it, why don't you have, why don't you be optimistic rather than pessimistic? They tell you no. Tell yourself. It's not because they don't want me. It's because they can't pay me. And you move on. <laughs> Reality. Don't get depressed. Don't get discouraged. You apply for this job, then they can't employ you. Yes, you cannot pay me, that's why you can't employ me. So I will go where my value is needed. Amen. And while you are seeking a job, develop yourself. Amen. Don't just get a certificate, get a certificate. You know what I mean by certificate? Let me explain. Yeah. Learn to do something apart from your degree. Yes. Sabi, can do what they call it in, in Patwa can do everything. Somebody that is very good with their hand, yeah. jack of all trade. Not only your degree, not only your academic, know how to do hair, know how to do nails, know how to do pedicure, manicure, anything so close, do anything, certificate, don't only get a certificate, learn to do something, get a skill. As you're looking for a job, get a skill. So that when you are fully developed, a company that is right for you, will employ you with ease because they know your words. So if that boy left you, hey listen, I am too beautiful for him. He doesn't even deserve me because he doesn't know what he, what he will lose him. He said you don't know what you have until you, it's gone. So when somebody walk out of your life, hey, somebody better is coming. Don't stay there and be depressed, he left you because nonsense. When you were born, your placenta did tie together. You were given back to alone. So when somebody lets you be excited, what extra baggage gone? Amen. The person with you, all you do is spend money. What are you? A bank? Yes. Give him this, give him that, give him that, give him that, give him that. At the end of the day, he still lets. So learn your lesson. Hey, listen, where I come from, we don't, we don't, we don't care, we don't, we don't mind, we don't, what do you call it? We don't mind man. We don't mind man. Man mind us. 
So I sit at home, look cute, and you work the money and come give to me. I will not be skilling myself out there and the man sit down and I'll be giving him money for what now? So when a man leaves you, extra baggage, come on. Don't feel bad. Listen. Bathe your skin. Put on your makeup anyhow you want it. Fix your hair. And make sure when you're going down the street, make sure he's walking past that direction too. And you're telling the sick I was going to die because he left me. Look at me now. Look good. When a woman leaves you too, look good. Don't be depressed when he left you, what would I do? Was it there when you were born? Was it there when God called you? If life didn't happen, you would not have met. You met by chance, but your life is not dependent on him or her. So when they leave you, move on. When people leave you, learn your lesson, learn from it, and move on to your next chapter. Open the next chapter and read. And when you move on to the next relationship, do better. Yes. All this discourage and Lord, I don't know how I do it. God, I asked you to come true for me. You didn't come true. But I loved him so much. I loved her so much and she still left me. Hey, listen. Better is coming. Yes. Better is coming. Better fishes in the sea. <laughs> in different shape and sizes too. Yes. <laughs> Dad will always say, every stick have a hole in the bush. Yeah, every morning, get on board. So everybody has their <laughs> own mates. It doesn't matter the shape or the size they come in. What is for you is for you. You know what is for you is for you. Hey, listen, sometimes we have to fight to get what we want, you know. If you're a married woman, don't see that and say, I'm already married to the man. There are some Jezebel out there that wants what you have. So make sure you guard your territory properly. Fix him up good. So when you see that he can ball, hallelujah. I say, you know what? I married a good woman. I married a good man. I don't have to look outside. Even if I look outside, everything outside doesn't interest me. But what I have in my house is gold. Come on, stand up, people. Let's give God praise. Yes. We're going to continue next week. Just lift up your hands. Father, come on, open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, call me higher. Come on, open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, call me higher. I want to go 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 higher. I will not be distracted. I will not lose focus. I will not lose track. I will wait until I am made. I will wait until the day of my appointment. Come on, open your mouth and begin to pray. Hallelujah. Come on, pray. Ask the Lord to help you today. Oh, God, we give you praise. We give you praise, we give you praise. We give you praise, we give you praise. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, He said, call on me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Come and open your mouth and begin to call on the name of Jesus. He said, for as many that call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Come and call upon him. Show me where I fit into your plan. Teach me in the way I ought to go, that I will be forever in your will. Show me where I ought to be. Help me, Father. Help me, dear God. Come and lift your hands and I pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people. Lord God, I thank you for your word. I pray, Father, that you will cause them to come up higher. That you will elevate their spirit, you will cause their spirit to be sensitive to your voice and listen for your voice in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you will breathe upon this one. Fresh breath, fresh anointing, fresh grace that you will breathe upon this one in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to take an offering. Can we stand? Let's bless our offering. Stand up. Let's bless the offering before we give.
Come on, lift up your offering and your tithes. Every time you give, send your money on an errand. Don't just give it. Money has a voice. That when you give before the Lord, speak to the money in your hand. Send it on an assignment. On an assignment. Father, we thank you for the gifts of your people. I pray, dear Father, that out of the abundance here, that you have given unto them, we bring a token back to say thank you. For your word declares, O oh God, that you love a cheerful giver. Lord God, I pray that for as many that will give sparingly and cheerfully, you will bless them. Your word also say, O oh God, that you will rebuke the devourer for their sake, even as they bring their offering and tithe. I pray, dear Father, by the principle and the covenant of tithing and offering, we we'll pray, O oh God, that you will do for them as you have declared in the name of Jesus. Bless those that have to give and do not have to give in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, that you do that your sacrifice, your sacrifice will come to you as a sweet smelling salvo in the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Father. In Jesus' name, amen. You can come now and give your offering and your tithes. Hallelujah. Love, I 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 love, I